Okay, here we go with the most exciting, <laughs> I say that with tongue in cheek, the most exciting uh, presentation of this whole program, and that's the basics of financials. I'm sure you were waiting for this, but I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. I'm going to speak to you and play in old eighth grade English and not bore you with a lot of financial mumbo jumbo, but I, I really want you to appreciate what this is about and what it could become for you. And with a successful business under your belt, it will be part of the way you do business. And then I'm going to save you at the end of this and provide you a very simple way for you to do your own very first financials in a very easy way. Here we go. So here we are in step four still in, ev in evaluation. And we're now going to be talking about the financials and how to finance your business. And when we finish this, then we're going to get back to work on the business plan that we introduced to you in step two and have you transfer all the material that you've done so far into this business plan template. More about that later. So I'm sure you have all heard the term financial pro forma. Uh, it's very famous and financial guys love to use that term just to confuse everybody but it basically is three financial statements the first one is an income statement that's expressed over a period of time usually two or three years with the main focus being on the first year but over this period of time you simply try to show are you profitable so at the bottom line of it all, you factor in all of your revenue and all your costs and all your expense and calculate your profitability month by month by month over that period of time. The second is the cash flow statement. Again, over a period of time. And how are you using cash? Better yet, are you using up cash and are you going to potentially run out? Because you want to know that kind of stuff. I'll explain later that it's kind of a really fancy, sophisticated check register, but it's much more than that, that is helping you understand where, where you are with your money. Not only money you have, but money that's still owed to you and money you have to pay out that you haven't done so yet, factoring all of that stuff in. The third is a balance sheet, a very arcane concept of expressing what resources you have and what liabilities you have against those very same assets, like you owe money, things like that, and balancing it all out to see what your company is worth at the end of it. Those are the free three financial statements, famously known as the financial performance. That's what we're going to get to in a few minutes here. But it's a formal way of expressing your financials. Investors want to see this stuff. Banks want to see this stuff. Any sophisticated partner is going to want to see this stuff. If you ever have, have an audit, you're going to have to be able to present this kind of material. All right, that's a quick introduction to financial statements. So what the heck good are they? You might want to know. Well, they provide ways for you to control the cash of your business, your profit and profit margins, and certain ratios that have to do with the financial performance of your business. So they provide you the tools to see all of that. There are actual metrics about your financial health that, that can be evaluated and action can be taken upon them. So you're evaluating your current company health and how it might be healthier or less healthy in the future. You can, you can then communicate that to investors. That could be equity investors, bankers, friends and family, private individuals of all sorts. And also uh, helps you evaluate strategic options. You need cash sometimes to enter new markets. So it'd be nice if you could pro project a point in time where you have enough money to do something else with your business that you couldn't do today. So there's some good reasons why to have this thing and what they're good for. So why should you even care about this? Well, you should, take my word for it, but you have to be able to assess the, your business performance and it's all reflected in your financials. 
at the end of the, at, at the end of it all, all your marketing and sales and great products, you've got to be able to show where the money is and how it's coming in and how it's leaving you. Uh, so why should you care? Decisions may affect your your financial viability. Decisions about your product strategy and your marketing strategy. And you can uh, factor these new ideas into your financial forecast and determine whether or not you're going to be financially viable. It helps you effectively manage the accounting function of your business. Uh, as a startup, that's rather easy to do in a simple matter of bookkeeping. When things get more complicated, you have lots of partners, you have big payroll, and lots of other complex things that have to be accounted for, uh, you need a process that results in the finan three financial reports I mentioned earlier. Your investors, whether they're bankers or equity investors or whatever, partners, many partners are going to want to see this stuff. Customers sometimes. So, you know, if you're a startup and you're you're trying to deal with a big corporation, they sometimes want to know what your financial status is. They're going to ask you for this material, so you need to be able to provide it to them. Later on, on down the road, if you ever want to sell your business, these financial reports are the basis for certain methods of valuing your company, and you want all of this in order so you can be able to figure that out or have some expert help you figure that out. So you should have, you should care, let's say, and you own them. So take care of them and do them well. Okay, now the road's going to get a little rocky. We're going to start explaining some of these reports. And the first one is the income statement. Simply put, the income statement is a document that reflects the revenue coming into your company as sales and subtracts from that the cost of what it, what it took to make the product in the first place and all of the operating expense that goes into various things about the operations of your business. You subtract the cost and expense from the revenue and you have profit. And then, of course, you've got to pay tax on it and then you'll have net profit after tax. So I've shown a, a picture here of, quite frankly, what an income statement looks like. It's pretty much like this. At the top is revenue from sales, and then you plunk in cost of goods sold and subtract it from revenue, and you now have gross profit. That's the amount of profit from the actual sale of the product minus what it costs to provide it in the first place. So. For a product, that's manufacturing costs. For a service, that's the cost of the people performing the service. Pretty simple. Then, you have a budget. Well, you're spending money on the budget. How much have you spent on operating expenses, for selling, for marketing, for just general administration of the company, for lawyers and accountants, research and development? Of course, that famous depreciation line, and I'm not going to bore you to explain that to you. We'll do that later. And then, interest, income, and expense, and things like that are factored in. You add all of that up, you have operating uh, expenses, and subtract that from gross profit. It equals operating income before income taxes. Calculate the taxes for uh, your geography and subtract it from operating income. You have net income or a net loss. That's an income statement. Okay, the next statement is the cash flow statement. So in words, I'll show you a picture in a minute, but in words, a cash flow statement is done month by month by month through the past and projected into the future of reflecting how much cash did the firm, the company generate in that month. Uh, and at the very start of this calculation is the net income from that income statement I just explained to you. Net income after tax. Then you factor in, oh, sorry, let me back up. There it kind of looks like your check register. Ah, got money coming in, made a deposit. Now I've got money going out. So the balance sheet adjustments, that is the changes month to month of accounts receivable, money owed to you, and the changes month to month of what you owe people, 
is factored into this cash flow statement. Then we factor in cash from investing activities. That's not sales income. That came in as loans or equity investing uh, or paid out as buying property or buying equipment, a big capital expense of some kind. So with, with all of that added up at the end of a month, you've got the ending cash position of, of your business, how much money you actually have to work with. So here's what a cash flow statement kind of looks like. It's pretty simple. Starts at the top with net income for that period, that month, let's say. August of 2000X, 1X here. So I've reflected $1,000 versus, versus, uh, of net income coming into the company and factored in those balance sheet changes I mentioned earlier at negative $500. It, that went down $500 for the month. So the cash flow from operations is $500. Then, during the same month, you had uh, you paid $50,000 for equipment. It's a capital expense. That's money that left your checkbook. And then cash from financing, you took in the issuance of stock, you sold some stock in your company for $100,000, and you borrowed another $75,000. A total of $175,000 <clears> came into the company as financing. So the net increase in cash in this case is $125,000. It's that $175 minus $50. So the cash balance for this period uh, happened to have started at $50,000 and since we added $125,500 the cash ending period uh, for this period is $175,500. So you'll see this cash flow month by month by month by month and the ending cash position is where you want to focus your eyes. Is that going up or is it going down? If it's going down you start worrying. If you can't explain it, something bad is going on. So that's a cash flow statement and a little bit about how it operates. And now at great risk, I try to explain a balance sheet. <laughs> and you probably have heard some of these terms, assets, liabilities, stockholder equity, and all that stuff. But simply there at the very top here, the assets of your company are resources that you own stuff that you've paid money for, buildings, equipment, uh, possible future benefits uh, for that very same stuff, uh, which are all valued at market value. Those are assets. And what assets do, they, they uh, are then compared to the liabilities you have. These are obligations that your company has to pay money out, like it, like paying for a loan. There's a your uh, principal left or the balance left on your loan is reflected as a liability on your balance sheet. Uh, on your balance sheet, it's anything that requires cash outflow, whether it's in the current period, let's say in the next year, or long term over many years. Classify them. In, in these two different time frames. Now, <clears throat> what's left is stockholder equity. That's the net worth of your company. So assets equals liabilities plus stockholder equ equity. Said differently, assets minus li liabilities could equal stockholder equity or the net worth of your company. So this is what your investors will focus on because they want to see stockholder equity increasing over time. It's your net worth or your book value. You may have heard those terms before. That's as far as I'm going to go with trying to explain a balance sheet and how it's calculated in, the, in most of the um, spreadsheets that you'll ever see that, that do all of these three reports for you uh, auto automatically calculate all this stuff. You don't need to worry about how you calculate the balance sheet and how it flows to uh, the income statement. So furthering 
and still at great risk, I'm going to explain the relationships of these three statements. The income statement, remember, is uh, revenues minus cost, gross profit minus expense equals profit after tax. Inside that income statement well, was a, a reflection of depreciation. You get the benefit of depreciation uh, and can claim it as a loss in your income statement. That's not real money. So depreciation expense is put back on your statement of cash flows uh, as, a, as an adjustment uh, to, to cash because it really wasn't cash. So the balance sheet, uh, some of the balance sheet items flow over to your statement of cash flows as well. Remember I talked about the balance sheet adjustments? Well, the changes in inventory is a reflection of the use of cash or the reduction of the need of cash. Same for accounts receivable and accounts payable. All of these things are factored into this statement of cash flow. This is what I meant earlier by a really, really smart checkbook register. But it ends in this ending cash balance. I circle it in red. That's where your eyes go almost immediately. You're going to manage your business for a long time just on cash flow alone because you don't want to run out of it. That would be a terrible experience. So in summary here, I've made my case to the court, you, the, the jurors, that it's critical to know the financial health of your business, uh, especially cash, as I mentioned earlier. It helps you under, understand how today's decisions will affect tomorrow's profitability and tomorrow's cash flow, for that matter. It helps identify cash needs for growth and sustainability. It helps define your company's valuation at the end of the day. All these are reasons you should pay attention to this and learn more and more about it as time goes on as your business matures. Okay, now I've taught you <laughs> the financial pro forma, but here's my surprise for you. For this class, I'm suggesting to you that we just work on something very simple, which I call a cash budget. It starts with revenue at the top and uh, a calculation of gross profit based on the cost of goods sold. As a budget in here uh, for all of your expenses, you add all of that up, it automatically then subtracts it from gross profit and creates um, the cash flow, plus or minus, and accumulated cash, or the lack thereof, over a period of time. So this is what I want you to work on, and there's a template for it. And your instructor will help guide you through it, but all of the uh, cells that you see in yellow are what you have to fill in. All the rest is calculated for you. So it's pretty simple, but will give you a feel for how cash flow dynamic kind, kind of works. It helps you understand what your cash demands are going to be for the first several months of your business because there, there's where it's critical. That's where you're going to need money. So it'd be good to know how much you're going to need and give yourself a little breathing room and raise it and some more to boot in order to give you a buffer when things don't go quite right. So here are the next steps for class and your mentoring session. Uh, discuss your marketing strategy and your sales strategy templates that you did for, for last week. And then update also and be able to present your updated elevator pitch with that information. For the next session, you complete this cash budget and provide uh, to your mentor for review and comments. And don't hesitate to ask your mentor for help early on if you don't understand how to how to do this. We all have worked with this kind of a, uh, a financing scheme for, for startups, so we know it works. But discuss it in your next mentoring session, and don't leave that session without you understanding what to do with a cash budget. And then update your elevator pitch with what you learned. Okay, that's the end of uh, this module. Now, if you have questions, uh, go ahead and contact your instructor mentor, and your choices for doing that are, you can email your instructor at innovationcenter at faytech.edu. 
You can make a call at 910-678-8496. And uh, you can schedule a meeting with your mentor in the virtual office on Blackboard. You can also post a question on question for my mentor discussion forum and have others participating in the answer to the question. It's a good way of sharing information amongst uh, uh, participants. But please note that you should not post a question that is divulging confidential information that would open up that confidential information to others to read. So be forewarned there. So that's it. Get your homework done. Look forward to talking to you in the next class.